Happy Monday Knitters! I'm Louise from Wildflower Wool and welcome back to my channel. It is another episode of New Start Monday Knits. And how has your week been? I got a lot of knitting done this week, everybody. So I hope everybody else found their knitting mojo, had lots of time, sat out in the garden, and got lots of knitting done. Where shall I start? I've got two new projects. As always, I have a finished dish cloth, so I might as well just start with that. Um... Okay, this is, there we go. This is that dishcloth pattern that I started last week. I got it all finished. This seemed to take a lot of yarn. But look at the front. Can you see the fun little lace? It's called Tunnel Lace. Um, it's fun. It's nice. It has pearl. The only, I don't know if I'd say downfall, it has pearl three togethers in it. It helps if you have a pointy needle and if you don't knit it too tight. If you're knitting really tight and trying to get your needle into three stitches, it gets a little tricky. But you can see right there, everywhere, there and there and there, you can kind of see the decrease line. Um, oh, and I didn't try. One of the great comments left this week for this dish class was saying instead of doing a pearl three together you could do like a central double decrease if you were doing like a mitered square you could um what would you slip one knit two together pass one over that would get rid of two stitches as well um but i didn't try it because it would change how the um the decrease leaned but I would like to do that. And you know what? I've forgotten about it. I was going to do a little swatch to show you, and I totally forgot until I started talking about this. So maybe I will try to do that little swatch this week. I'm going to keep this out so I remember. Because it would be fun to compare the two decreases and see what we like best. Because, I mean, really, it would just change the look a little bit, I'm thinking. It would give you more of an up and down decrease, whereas this one has a little slant to it. But, okay. Let me see if I remember or leave me a comment <laughs> to remind me and I will try to remember to do up a little swatch and we can compare. So that was the dishcloth. I only got one dishcloth done this week, but that's okay. One a week is my goal and that is a good thing. Oh, but I have a finish. I have a finish and I typically don't show all my finishes here because I keep them till the end of the month, but I really wanted to show you. Look at this the um this color work scarf is done so if you haven't seen this before oh and i should have shown you except i've, I've tossed my i literally threw it over onto the coffee table so i would remember to do the swatch so it would remind me so i can't pick it up and grab it and show you again so but the green dishcloth was burnett handicrafter mm, sage might have been the colorway i can't remember i've got the ball oh i could tell you because I've got the ball band in here because I'm using it. So the one I just showed you, the tunnel lace, is this, yes, sage green. So this is being used up in a little scrappy dishcloth that we'll get to in a minute. Anyways, back to this scarf. So this was Patton's Classic Wool DK Superwash. Three colors, the purple, the green, and kind of a really light gray. I ended up using six full balls. These little DK superwash balls are 50 gram balls. And I used two balls of each color. So 100 grams of each color. And I knit a lot on this. I think I left my, I did, my stitch marker right here. So I moved this after we chatted last week so I could see my progress and I was addicted to knitting this. Okay, I knit there. So this is how much I knit all last week since we last visited. This much on this scarf, which was almost, I was just that much short of doubling the length. But that's all right. It ended up being, it's really nice. I didn't actually measure. I don't have a tape measure quite handy. It's not quite as long as I was kind of aiming for, 
about 80, 88 inch, 80, 40, 44, 88. So I must have got close to 80 inches. Anyways, it's, it's nice. I stand up a little bit. You can see it comes down nicely. So I really like, and it is double thick because I knit it on a 16 inch circular needle. Oh, and look at that. I can show you right here was my beginning of the round. So this is the only little bit you can, I mean, you know, won't see it unless you actually look for it, but that's where I crossed my yarns. I picked up the one that had been rusting and I dropped the other color. So we just kind of have this little twist on the inside, which you don't, you don't see when you're wearing it. It's warm, it's warm. <laughs> six, so six balls, six balls out of my stash has been knit. I think this is going to end up being a Christmas present. I was thinking about keeping it for me, but I may knit another, I'm gonna knit some more of these because it was really fun because I couldn't put it down. Now, I have a question. All you smart knitters out there. My original thought, remember I said I was going to put a tassel on here. And there was some, some debate, some questions. People have kind of said I should do it all in one color or should I do it multicolor? Now I'm even questioning if I should put tassels on here, like a fringe, a fringe. If I should even do that at all or if I should leave it just let it curl or could I take purple yarn and just tack it down like do like a running stitch I did this on a hat which makes it look um, a little decorative I don't know what do you think should I try to close the end or just leave it and let it roll and carry on I'd love to let to know what your thoughts are or put a fringe on, because I could do a fringe, but now, I don't know, I'm the fringe isn't talking to me the way it did when I first started this, so this may be fringeless scarf, but it's done, and I love it, and it is super cozy, so I started to say 16 inch needle, I'm pretty sure I cast on 88 stitches, I just did enough just to basically fill the needle, and then I just alternated colors, two colors per row, switched out one color, and picked up the third color, all the way round and round and round, for a finished scarf. I am super happy with this. Really, really like it. Okay, a finish. That is a great way to start. It is June, everybody. So that is, <laughs> I just tossed that too. I need to find a better spot to set my finished stuff here. It is June, which is, which to me, June kind of starts the mark of thinking, seriously thinking about Christmas knitting. And that may be a Christmas present. And this year, I mean, of all years, this would be the year for me to um, actually get my Christmas knitting done on time. All of this extra time that I'm having at home right now. And just the thought of having that be a Christmas present and I can set it aside and like tick somebody's name off my list actually feels great. And I'm wondering why I have not done this years ago. <laughs> so let's hope it continues and hopefully I'll get some more, some more Christmas presents done other than my dishcloths. So this is one of my new starts for this week. And this is just gonna be a scrappy dishcloth. I think I am just gonna go with my super simple dishcloth and just use up some of these odd bits. The yellow and the green. So the green I showed you, the green, this is the leftover bit from the lacy dishcloth from last week. So here, this is what I had left out of this whole ball. Like this will be an 85 gram ball, I do believe. Bum, 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 bum. It's a 50, oh, why did I say it's a 50, it's a 50 gram ball. Hmm. Somehow I was thinking that the solids were 85 and the fun variegated were like 50 gram. I don't know. Did they used to be? Maybe they've cut down the size. Anyways, 50 grams. And typically you can kind of get two balls out of these. And I am not, that lazy dishcloth, it really seemed to eat up the yarn. And this is what I was left with. So this Bernat Handy Crafter colorway is sage green. And I had debated on the lace one to do another um, pattern repeat just to make it a little taller. But then I thought, nah, I thought it was looking big enough as it was. And I wanted to save this. 
so I could do a scrappy dishcloth with it. So this will be finished up in this dishcloth. And the yellow, I had that teeny, teeny, tiny little bit left over, like teeny tiny, like this much left over. This is the, I love this cotton banana colorway. Very, very soft, really nice. So this obviously is gonna be done quickly. Both of these will be done. That'll mean two new ball bands will go into my ball band box. And I also picked up two other bits that I had up in a container up in the yarn room. Both of them are Handicrafter, Burnett Handicrafter. This little variegated, don't know what colorway he is, but I can tell you what the yellow is. So even though this is gonna be scrappy, I'm gonna to try to make it look pretty, just keeping the yellows and the greens going. Does this have a name on it or is it just a color? I think it's just a, oh no, pale yellow, pale yellow. So is is going to find new life as a finished dishcloth and get out of my little scrappy tote that I have been keeping on my little odd bits in. And this guy, I know it seems kind of funny to have, it is trying to be summer here. Um, the weekend was cold and rainy again. So I don't know, maybe I'm jinxing myself by using a, a winter themed bag, but I like the bag. And my friend made it for me, so I'm gonna keep using it all year long. Okay, so that was the start. I'll show you, oh, I'll show you. This is what I'm really excited for. So over on the Fiber Friends Friday Night Knitting Facebook group, it's a closed group, but anybody, any knitters are welcome to join it, but please, if you request to join, make sure you answer both questions. If you don't answer the questions, you won't get in. But if that happens, if you accidentally hit the submit button quickly before answering the buttons, just redo it again. And, um, and we would love to let you in and join us. So, and we have started a double knitting knit along. It's going to go all summer. It's going to be our summer knit along. Oh my gosh, this actually looks pretty good on camera. Look at that. Um, that makes me happy. So I started this last week and I had just, I hadn't got into the pattern. I had started, just had the few rows of, of the solid color knitting done on the bottom. And I had cast on too many stitches. So I took it off and then on Friday's video, the finished Friday video, I pulled it all out and I cast on. I showed you how I do my two color cast on, if that is something that you would like to try. And then I have just been working from, this is an intarsia, not an, well, yes, I suppose, I guess it could be an intarsia or it could be a stranded knitting if you were gonna do multiple of them. Anyways, this was just a chart for color work and I have made it into a double knitting chart. So if you're doing that, if you find, don't have, again, I don't have anything to show you. I'm feeling unprepared. <laughs> if you have a chart, so if you look through a stitch pattern book, look online, look on Pinterest. I found this on Pinterest. I just, I knew I wanted a daisy. I just typed in daisy knitting intarsia chart. I don't know why I picked intarsia, but anyways, this daisy came up. And you can turn this into double knitting. The only thing you have to remember, if you're gonna double knit it, every square on your chart, you have to knit twice. You have to make, every square has to be a knit and the opposite color purl. Because you're remembering you're knitting two colors. You're knitting both sides as you go across your needle. So you can take any chart and just every square on the chart, work it twice in each color. So every square on this daisy chart, I would knit in a yellow and a gray. And it works because look at this, this is my yellow side. And you can look at that fun gray flower starting. And then are you ready for the magic? Gray side with a yellow flower. And I don't think I even have a mistake on here because that'll be the next thing that I'm gonna show you is how, what you have to do with double knitting is you have to move both yarns forward and back because I always always have a yellow. Actually, you know what? Let's take a really quick minute here and I'll show you. I'll show you what I do for the edges. The edges on double knitting can be a little tricky to keep them even and tight and looking tidy. 
So what I do, and I know this is going to be backwards for you. So this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at my gray side. So when I look at my work, I'm ready to start with a gray, gray stitch because I'm on the gray side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pretend I'm like knitting backwards here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to put my needle in here to knit this gray stitch. The yellow, I'm going to just snug everything up. The yellow, I actually bring right around in front of my work and I hold it. So I bring it around and this is what you're, you're going to be looking at that yellow. So this is backwards for me. I would be looking at, oh, sorry, I really <laughs> jiggled you there. Okay, so this is how I would look at it. I would bring the yellow around in front, my gray I snug up, and then I knit with my gray. Snug it up again. Now both yarns I want to bring around the back around behind my work. Don't, the yellow that's already in front, don't pull it between the needle tips. You don't want to do that. Bring them both around the edge of your work, back to the back. And now this is where I'll separate out. I always tend to hold the color that I started with in my right hand and the second color in my left hand. Now it's the next stitch is a purl because with double knitting, you're always working a knit, a purl, a knit, a purl. Both yarns have to always move. So if you're purling, both yarns have to come to the front of your work. My next stitch is yellow, so I'm gonna purl a yellow. And my gray, it just sits here. Now that I've got my stitch made, both my yarns come to the back of my work. My next stitch, I'll get this out of the way, my next stitch, is gray. I'm going to knit it with both my yarns at the back. My next stitch here is a yellow. It's a purl. Both my yarns have to come to the front, even though the gray is just going to sit there. And I put my needle in and I purl, and then I swing both yarns to the back. I've got a stitch marker on here just to mark these are the edge stitches. These aren't included in my in the chart that I'm reading, so that's just a just a visual reminder for me not to get these four stitches because you always think of your double knitting stitches as pairs. There's four here, but that's a front and a back stitch, that's one pair, a front and a back stitch, that's another pair. So you can either think of that as four stitches or two pairs. Whatever, whatever makes sense to you. So that's what I do for the edge, is when you bring that opposite color right around to the front, hold it snug, let them both come to the back, and then you carry on. I hold one yarn in each hand, and you're still working a knit purl, knit purl. The knit purl, knit purl always, always continues as a knit purl. The odd time when you're changing colors, when I'm going from my okay i'll talk on this side so you can see a yellow yellow background and when i get over here into my gray that is when you will see two stitches see how right here i have two yellow stitches that's what you want the only time you want to see two colored stitches of the same color side by side is when you're flipping your colors from side to side Normally, you always want them to be a gray, a yellow, a gray, a yellow, a gray, a yellow, a gray, a yellow. Then here I'm switching because I'm going from a gray petal to yellow on this side. That's where I, I have two gray stitches side by side. So it takes a little practice, but once you can see and understand which stitch is working on which side of your work, when you can read your stitches, it, may, it, it does start to make sense. So anyways, that is what I've got done and I'm loving it. I'm liking the shape of the flower. I did have to chart it out. I was initially starting just to read it off my phone and I thought, you know, 
typical Louise fashion. I thought, I can do this. I can knit from this. I can keep, you know, refreshing my screen and I can keep track of where I am just by counting my rows. I don't know where I am. Yeah, well, I messed it up. <laughs> and somehow I think because it's flat knitting, you remember you have to read your chart, you know, the one side from right to left and the other row left to right. So I had to keep track when I was on my oh gray side i was re gray side i was reading left left to right and somewhere in there i think i messed them up and started knitting from the wrong end and my flower petal there was no nice indent here it was just one big yellow blob <laughs> so i had to pull back a few rows and pick up my stitches which was not a big deal i did not have to restart i just pull pulled back Actually, I was right, I was down about here. So I pulled back right where that last gray stitch was and started where my yellow went all the way across. And then I got myself back on track and got this much more done. Having a lot of fun with this. I just guessed, I did three plain rows I cast on and I did three plain rows down here and started my daisy. So I'll end off with three plain rows and hopefully I'm pretty square. It was totally just a guess, but... Um, I think it's going to work out good. So hopefully this will be finished and I can show it to you next week. And I plan on doing a few more of these. I may try, I may do a solid color cast on next time. Just to, just to, um, switch it up a little bit. Okay. I don't, <laughs> now I have a ran, I have a stitch marker just hanging loose here. You know what I'll do? I'm going to knit the next stitch. I, I don't, I didn't want to carry on because I'm not sure what my next stitch color actually is. Let's have to make a mental note to double check before I carry on. But I'm just going to knit one more stitch so my stitch marker is on there and set this aside for right now. So that is really, other. I have one more new start, but my double knitting and finishing that scarf, that is what I worked on. Oh, no, it's not. I have a sweater to show you. Okay, it's within arm's reach, but hold on. I'm just going to have to reach for it. I was going to say, is that all I worked on? I was gonna say, but the weekends typically have become my sweater knitting. Oop. Okay. I don't know where the pattern is. I was going to show you. It was out of the, this little green sweater. It's a summer top that I'm making. Is out of the Knit Simple, the current issue of Knit Simple. And I had, I showed you the back. It's knit in pieces. It's a front... It's a front and a back. It's a little sleeveless summer top. So there's some ribbing on the bottom. This is the back. It's just plain stockinette, shaping for the arm, shaping for the back of the neck. That piece has been done for a couple weeks. And this is how much I've got on the front. I am almost up to, this hat needs to be, I think 12 and a half inches. So I've got a little bit left, just eyeballing it. I think I've got a little bit left to go before I start the armhole shaping. But I know when I showed this to you last, I was only, I think I had two of these Vs done and I've gotten this much more done. So look, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I've just started one row on the eighth V. So right now I've got the side shaping done. So that was, I mean, that was the amount of the trickiness of this front piece was just keeping track of rows. It was every 10 rows, there was a stitch decreased on the edge. So it was just keeping track of the eight row repeat for here and 10 rows on the side. And I just used actually pen and paper and I just ticked off my rows, checked off my decreases when I got to them and kept track of my one through eight rows. Pretty easy, wasn't too hard. I still think this would be a good, if this is, um, if you're looking for like a first sweater project or something first time with lace, this is really as easy as you can get. One pattern repeat, you don't need to have stitch markers in between. I have them marking the lace panel just so I don't have to worry about counting stitches across. I just know when I get to my marker, it is time to work the fun little lace. It's been a, a fun knit. So I am hoping, I never want to make predictions or jinx myself, but I'm hoping there's a chance I may have the knitting done on this the next time we chat on Monday. So I will very quickly 
show you my new start here. I found some of this cotton in my stash. Has anybody knit with this? Cascade Yarns Ultra Pima Cotton. 220 yards, 200 meters. I had three skeins of this in my stash. It feels really nice. 100% cotton. Um, must be like a sport weight. They're suggesting a 3.75 or a four millimeter needle. This ball I already had caked up. And I started that funnel lace pattern again. Now I just grabbed, I literally grabbed a needle that was sitting here on my coffee table last night, but I think it is too loose. This is a five millimeter. I knew I wanted something because I wanted it to look a little lacy and I wanted to have good drape and be really light and flowy. And, but I think this is a little too thin. Little, I mean, the, the work is a little too open. I think it needs to just have a little more structure to it. So this, what did I say this was, a five millimeter? I think it's five millimeter, yes. So I'm gonna try a four. A four is really what I wanted, but to be honest, I was lazy and that meant I'd have to run upstairs and grab one or search for one, and I didn't. So this was here, so I thought, ah, oh, you know, you never know until you try. So I'm gonna leave this and I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna carry on. So I may go down to a four and a half and a four and see all three needle sizes and what it looks like, how it feels, because you never know until you have something to compare it to. That is always my philosophy. But I don't know. My gut is telling me that this is a little too loose, that the stitch pattern isn't really showing up. I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna compare it. I'm gonna keep going. So this is just, my gauge swatch. I want this to be just a nice summery shawl that I can throw over my shoulders while I'm sitting outside knitting and just to keep the sun off my shoulders basically. But I don't know, I may end up with a sunburn in this lovely ton of lace pattern <laughs> if I'm not too careful. But anyways, that is what my plan was. I wanted something summery and I had three skeins of this white because I'm really not sure how much yarn I'm going to use. I'll have to kind of estimate that. Um, once I figure out my needle size. So that is what I'm gonna be working on, is figuring out my needle size, hopefully get my daisy double knitting finished and the front of my sweater done. And then I can seam it up and put the finishing touches on it. So that is it. I hope everybody else is having a great week so far. Hope you have lots of knitting time this week or this weekend, and we will chat again on Monday. Have a great weekend at a great week. <laughs> I'm already thinking about the weekend. This is not a good sign for this week. All right, everybody, have a fantastic week, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.